the It Takes Root Solidarity to Solutions Week webinar. Uh, we have an incredible list of speakers who will be talking about both the Local to Global Solutions Summit and Solidarity um, Week of Actions. Uh, and we will be asking you to type questions into the chat as speakers move through the um, presentation. We'll be reviewing a couple of those at the end and ask for some folks uh, to respond to them. The call, as we get folks on, want to remind people why we're having this call. This call really is um, designated for members and allies that want to get activated into the Soul to Soul Week of Actions. Um, it's an invitation to amplify the buzz and activate your bases. Um, we have large goals for turnout, both for a number of the events and obviously for the actions and the, uh, the summit. And you'll be able to hear more about that from some of the local hosts. Um, and so why don't I start first by kind of going through our speakers list. We will have, um, I'll share a little bit as, as the opening on the history of It Takes Roots, uh, the local to global community space, share some of the goals of the overall organizing for It Takes Roots, and then um, pass it on to Candy Mossett from the Indigenous Environmental Network, who's emerged as a leading voice in the fight to bring visibility to the impact that climate change and environmental injustice are having on Indigenous communities across North America. She currently serves as the IEN Native Energy and Climate Campaign Organizer, and many of you know her as a very inspirational and incredible leader of, the, um, of IEN, but also a, 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 an incredible contributor to the It Takes Roots um, collaboration. Um, we also have Penny Opal Plant from Idle No More San Francisco Bay. She's one of the co-founders of Idle No More San Francisco Bay. Penny's worked for over 35 years to ensure that the sacred system of life continues in a matter that is safe, sustainable, and healthy. She's Yaki, Mexican, Choctaw, Cherokee, and of European ancestry. Um, she's also the signatory on the Historic Indigenous Women of the Americas Defending Mother Earth Treaty and a co-founder of the Movement Rights. So, um, we'll, uh, Penny will be followed by Tony Samara, Right to the City, um, who will be talking about land and housing rights, uh, gentrification, and a lot of the local solutions and work that are happening in the Bay. And finally, we'll hear from Nemo Bassi from the Health of Mother Earth Foundation, who's director of the ecological think tank Health of Mother Earth Foundation and member of the steering committee for All Watch International. He was chair of Friends of the Earth International and executive director of Nigeria's Environmental Rights Action and a co-recipient of the 2010 Right Livelihood Award. We um, will be closing out with an overview of each day of the Soul to Soul Week by Tere Almaguer from Poder, both in our power community member and an environmental justice organizer who served in this role for 15 years. She coordinated with youth leadership programs and um, works on both organizing and political education programs for hundreds of San Francisco youth. Currently, Ted is working with the Urban Capicinex program to steward Hummingbird Farm and works on a collection of both healing and food sovereignty work. We'll dedicate about 20 minutes, if we can, to questions and answers. And this is just a reminder, again, to put your questions and answers in the chat as speakers are, are presenting um, so we can review them. So It Takes Roots started off really as a call to action and orientation for climate justice, displacement, gentrification, indigenous sovereignty during the 2014 People's Climate March, where more than 400,000 people came out to the streets. In 2015, um, It Takes Roots once again organized the Global South Social Movements to declare that the Paris Agreement in itself wasn't enough because of the lack of human rights, indigenous rights, and uh, binding agreements. So in 2017, with the attacks on communities came in with the new administration, um, it, it Takes Roots began to really galvanize an op, a visionary oppositional uh, role in the U.S. And um, 
address a narrative that um, address a, net, a narrative from communities, a solution-based narrative that address protection of water, land, homes, and life. It Takes Roots is made up of IEN, the Grassroots Global Justice, the Climate Justice Alliance, Right to the City, and we rep represent collectively multiracial and multicultural groups, about 200 organizations in 30 states and territories to include the US and Canada. Our work together is centered on the Hamas principles, on bottom-up organizing, on people speak for themselves. And together we've led the front lines of many, many fights in the US, but we're also the ones that are le leading the front lines of solutions. Um, this moment on Soul to Soul provides us an opportunity for those kind of solutions. We recognize that um, the, the moment that's um, happening in September in California has both local to global implications. And yet there aren't uh, enough spaces on the outside of DCAS that can address a commons perspective, a place for social movements to gather. And so It Takes Roots is providing that space for us to gather, for us social movements to provide solutions and to um, provide perspectives. The goals of um, It Takes Roots in the Bay, and you'll hear more details about how we'll be organizing and what's happening on the ground, are really to challenge and expose the neoliberal market solutions and disaster capitalist agenda being advanced primarily by Governor Brown and other elected officials and the corporate leaders at the GCAS, the Global Climate Action Summit that's proposed um, and scheduled for September. And some of this obviously is connected to the way that the um, GCAS is framing both air, water, land encroachment, pollution and destruction, militarization, mass incarceration, all of these both translocal and intersectional issues, um, but actually not centering those most highly impacted in, in that presentation. And so our goal is also to really center and highlight the leadership of frontline communities as we've done historically starting with the local leaders and the systemic solutions that communities are cultivating at the intersection of indigenous land rights, transformative justice, dismantling of border, border imperialism, which is so relevant right now. Um, but there's also an incredible amount of solutions that are coming forth from the Bay Area around food justice, agroecology, food sovereignty, um, the economic relocalization of strategies, in both housing and public transportation. And all of these we see are very connected to the kinds of root cause solutions that we need to be able to address climate change. And finally, the Soul to Soul Solutions and um, the Soul to Soul Summit and Week of Actions is a place for us to really demand the redirection of public subsidies, community wealth, tax dollars, investments that have historically gone to um, harming our communities away from polluting extractive corporations and their disaster capitalist schemes towards a more regenerative financing of community-led solutions. And so with that, I'm going to pass it on to Candy Mossett to talk a little bit more about the urgency of this moment and start really framing what some of the plans are for um, uh, September. Okay, thank you so much, Angela, and hello everybody out there in technology land can be a good thing and it can be a bad thing, as we will hear about in these next 45 minutes or so. Uh, the moment that we're in historically right now is just incredibly important. I can't stress enough. Uh, I've been working with the Indigenous Environmental Network for 11 years now and have seen the turmoil that has been caused by false solutions that are put forth in response to the climate crisis that we are facing, which is anthropogenic. I mean, human induced causes to the climate crisis. Um, we have seen basically a commodification of the sacred, um, the selling of air, the selling of water to be able to look at ways to combat the climate crisis. <clears throat> I grew up in North Dakota as a Hiradza woman. Uh, Mandan, Arikara, and learned from my grandparents about how to live upon the land in a respectful way as part of our culture, as part of our indigenous, indigenous background, native background. It never included some of the things that are going to be talked about at the Global Climate Action Summit. Those things include such tactics as carbon pricing, for example. 
If you want to learn more about carbon pricing, there is a booklet and a pamphlet that we all worked on collectively and put on the IEN website, www.ienearth.org. It's called Carbon Pricing, a Critical Perspective for Community Resistance. It's really important to know that the devil is in the details when it comes to these solutions. Um, oftentimes, Communities like mine, where there's fracking happening, poor communities, low-income communities are still impacted by these so-called solutions. Carbon pricing is one of those impacts, not only in the global north, but also in the global south, where a lot of people are impacted by what these schemes are. And the reason I say schemes is because at the end of the day, the bottom line is to continue to make money. <laughs> it's not necessarily about how to work away from the problem, the root cause of the problem, which is capitalism. And we need to talk about that and, and, and colonization. I don't think I saw any decolonization workshops within the GCAS. Um, it's hard to even get into that space. You have to be registered. You have to know somebody that knows somebody. That's how the conferences have been. The um, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change has 23 conferences already that they've had. Uh, leading up to this point, their 24th one is coming up this year. And going into these kinds of spaces is um, almost privileged for certain people. The reason is because they talk about things also like geoengineering, for example. And it's really scary. There's a project, in fact, in California that's going to be happening regarding geoengineering as one of those so-called solutions to the climate crisis. So instead of, for example, leaving fossil fuels in the ground and not creating more carbon, not creating more nitrogen, not continuing to impact our natural cycles, it's just about extraction and continued growth and continued power for things like cloud seeding. We're going to seed the clouds and control the weather that way. All of these things ultimately come back to harm us as humanity on the planet and as living beings on the planet. This is way beyond just a job. This is about the health and well-being of our mother, Mother Earth. You can call it what you'd like. The reality is that the most important resources of all that we need to worry about as any living being on this planet is the air we need to breathe, the water we need to drink, and the soil that we need to grow our food. We need to think about our brothers and sisters across the continent from the north to the south. It, it, it drives me crazy about indigenous communities when I hear about um, only certain people are allowed into this country in the United States. We're going to build a border wall and we're going to say only certain people can be here. Well, and if you're not a Native American, an American Indian, a Native, if you're not Mandan Harats or any of the other, tribes we have here, you're an immigrant. <laughs> there is no way that people should be telling others who can and cannot be here, especially our brothers and sisters to the South who are directly related to us. And, and it's, it's painful watching what's been happening to babies and families and separations. These are all part of those false solutions. It's a control mechanism, but it takes roots as rising up together as a collective. And we're saying no more. There are more of us <laughs> than there are of you, the, the naysayers, the, the guilty parties of colonization. And we are rising up and we are taking back our roots to get to the root causes of the problems because we have the real solutions. But we need to, to have people there. We need to just show up in strength and in numbers with us to stand with us and say to those leaders, global leaders that are going to be there, we the people are speaking. You always say to us, it's about supply and demand. Well, listen to our demands and quit forcing what you think we want on us. We're sick and tired of you trying to tell us what you think we want because you want money from it. We have the real solutions. It's an incredibly important moment. We hope to see you all in the Bay Area in September or to just support other ways that you can. And thank you so much for listening to me. And I'll turn it over to the next speaker for the rest of the webinar. Matikarads, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Candy. Pass it on to Penny Opal Plant from I Don't Know More from San Francisco Bay to start talking about more of the local efforts. 
Thanks, Angela. Thanks, Candy. It's always so inspiring to hear from you, Candy. I'm really glad that you're on the call with all of us today. So I want to just um, explain a little bit about Idle No More SFA. Uh, we're a group of all volunteers. We're tiny but mighty, and we are organized by a group of grandmothers who've been praying together since 2009. So primarily indigenous folks, but we have some allies. And we have focused on the refinery corridor here in the Bay, which I'll tell you about in a little bit, and also done some of the largest solidarity actions during the Standing Rock um, uh, water protectors actions. And we, um, I want to also share a little bit about California because, you know, most people, when they think about California, even people who live here, they don't really look at the history of this state. So, you know, California has some of the most temperate climate in the world. And before the Spanish arrived and before, you know, the United States arrived, people were, a lot of people were living here in what would be considered a paradise. And then the colonization started. And when the United States moved in with the, the gold mining, that's when this state of California began its history of being a, um, an extractive colony. And it, that has continued to this day. And with that came the genocide of, I think it's the largest genocide of indigenous people in the United States. And um, this state has more tribes within its boundaries than any, any other state. And, and the, the people here are still struggling. You know, there's still ongoing extractive projects that are happening with the water that the mercury from the gold mines uh, polluted and the birth defects that that is still causing to this very day. Um, so where we're having the, the It Takes Roots Soul to Soul a week of actions in San Francisco is on in, in San Francisco on occupied Ohlone territory. And locally, the leader is Karina Gold, who's been in a very long struggle to protect one of the last remaining shell mounds in the Bay. So the Ohlone people um, created these huge shell mounds over thousands of years. Uh, there, there's only one really remaining, unfortunately, but the largest one was the biggest thing that people could see, the Spanish, when they came through the, where the Golden Gate is now. It was 30 stories high. And in those shell mounds is an entire history of, uh, of the last 5,000, 6,000 years. Those were here before the pyramids were created in Egypt. And so locally, one of those struggles is to protect the last remaining shell mound in Berkeley, uh, which is underneath the parking lot, but it still remains there. And I don't know more SFA and the Bay Area Indian Community and Allies have been working very hard to make sure that the developer does not get permitted to build yet another retail um, condo development project. So that's one. As people come in, I think it's important to know that there are five refineries here along the bay. They're hidden in what you know some people would call sacrifice zones. Um, where I live, I overlook the Chevron refinery every day. I, I'm looking at it right now from my office where I'm sitting in my home. And the five refineries are Chevron, uh, Philip 66 in Rodeo, uh, Tesoro and Shell in Martinez, and Valero in Venetia. And wherever these refineries, refineries are, the communities around them are people of color or they're working poor. And the Phillips 66 refinery has been trying to get permitted to bring in between 90 and 123 tar sands filled oil tankers through the bay into their refinery. So we've been working very, very hard with the permitting agencies to make sure that that doesn't happen. And that is directly related to the Kinder Morgan pipeline that our First Nations relatives are fighting so hard to make sure that that doesn't happen. And I believe that they'll win um, because they said it's, we're not gonna allow it to go through. So these are this, the issues, uh, some of the issues that we have in the Bay. Um, another thing that just has risen up into the media's eye this year is Hunter's Point, which is not too far from 
the um, downtown San Francisco and which used to be a naval shipyard. So the, the corporation that was contracted by the Navy to clean up that shipyard, with, it had radioactive materials, it had toxins, it was really poisoned. A, a whistleblower has come forth and said that that information that was submitted that went through the regulatory process and was stamped and approved that yes, this did happen was falsified. And so I just want to also lift up that the regulatory agencies that many people believe will will protect us are there. That's not what they're for. You know, that's been my experience. They are really about permitting the the capitalist agenda to continue and the federal and state agendas of being in corporate pockets to continue. So when you come here, we'll, you'll be warmly welcomed by Ohlone people and the Bay Area Native community, which is very large. Um, it's one of the largest urban native populations in the United States as a result of uh, the relocation program and the, a lot of people came during the depression. My family came to Richmond and San Pablo in the 1930s. And um, we're all really excited to see everyone. Thanks. I'm passing it along. Hey, Penny, maybe you can talk about how Jerry Brown oh. uh, treats people, even from California. Right. I forgot to mention Jerry Brown. Thank you, Candy. So Jerry Brown, um, there's a whole campaign here in California called Brown's Last Chance. And one of our younger I Don't Know More members kind of helped kick that off at the climate talks in Bonn, Germany in December when they interrupted one of his speeches there in Germany and were saying, keep it in the ground in reference to the mass fossil fuel extraction industry that's here. And Jerry Brown pointed at Daniel and said, no, I'm going to put you in the ground. And so, you know, that was a horrible thing for him to say. He never apologized. And a big part of what California is organizing around is Jerry Brown. Even though this is his final term of office, we understand that he's going to be jumping off into the global cap and trade uh, finance debacle, which allows Chevron to continue to poison our community here, as well as all of the other refineries. So cap and trade is a huge false solution, as in G is geoengineering. And we know that the solutions come from our communities, especially as indigenous people, because the only reason that we are still here is that our ancestors were strong enough to withstand genocide. And they're, we are resilient people. We, you know, still, when we have, are living in our traditional places, we are still following our original instructions, which are basically the, the handbook of how to exist where we live within that sacred system of life that we're all a part of, not above, not below, but just simply a part of that is so vital for us to reintegrate that into everything that we do in our life. Thanks for reminding me, Candy. Yeah. Thank you, Penny, for sharing more about the local space. It's so important when there are global moments to really center um, folks coming into these places, into other people's homes on the local struggle and ask for that support um, to continue building the, 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 the long lasting uh, struggles of the local community. So thanks, Penny, for sharing on that. And Tony is gonna be speaking from Right to the City around the struggle around housing, gentrification, and displacement. Hey, everyone, how are you doing? Um, my name is Tony Samara. I'm super excited to be here and to be part of the, the Soul to Soul mobilization. Um, let me just start by saying a little bit about um, Right to the City, um, since maybe not everyone uh, is familiar with it. Um, so right to the City started in 2007. I've been involved with Right to the City since then. I joined the steering committee in 2012, the, the National Steering Committee. Um, currently, our Right to the City and our Homes for All national campaign have about 72 uh, member organizations in 40 cities and uh, in 25 states. Um, and, and housing and tenant work and tenant-centered work, anti-displacement work has been our primary focus, but Right to the City is actually not, was not and is not intended to be only a, a housing justice alliance. Um, our platform, which is uh, on our website, uh, righttothecity.org, 
has, uh, has actually 12 planks and includes um, environmental justice, immigrant justice, indigenous justice, freedom from police and state harassment, uh, and internationalism, among others. Um, and the whole concept of right to the city is rooted in a long tradition of municipal radicalism that sees the city as a space where oppressed people can fight and can win and can govern. It's, it has roots um, in resistance by oppressed communities in Western industrial cities from the Paris Commune to the Black Panthers uh, and in anti-colonial and anti-settler struggles like the South African township struggle uh, during the 1980s and 1990s. Um, but we were, we were founded largely as an anti-gentrification movement because in the late 1990s, uh, in the early 2000s, the years leading up to the Alliance formation in 2007, the primary expression of the structural violence of neoliberalism for us was the financialization of urban land, or looked at another way, the, the transformation of community into real estate. And this hit working class black and brown communities hard because these communities lived on undervalued urban real estate, at least from the point of view um, of the market. And once again, in the long history of colonialism, in the history of white settlerism, black and brown communities stood between uh, profiteers and their profits. Um, and we understood from the start that fighting for the right to stay was and is intimately linked to other threats to our communities, especially in gentrifying neighborhoods, the threat of hyper-policing. So the work is not just about housing, even though that's our focus, but about the liberation of communities. Um, what a lot of the work looks like here in the Bay Area, where I've been working now for uh, over four years, uh, but also around the state uh, in California and, and even really around the country is the fight for renters' rights. Um, this is where the threat and the pain are greatest and most widespread. Uh, when I started doing this work, uh, it became really clear that while there's a huge interest, obviously, in long-term uh, solutions to the housing crisis, um, that where people were actually feeling it was in uh, rent increases, $800 rent increases, $200 rent increases, multiple rent increases, but also in evictions. We started to see in 2012, 13, 14 epidemics of no fault evictions, entire buildings of working class people just getting eviction notices. No reason, just 60 days you need to get out. Um, mass evictions and displacement became really uh, regional uh, at this point. So it wasn't just in a few places, but everywhere you looked, this is what we saw. Um, and the, the kind of punchline of all of this was that uh, at a regional level in the Bay Area, we realized that what we were seeing was a, a form of resegregation, uh, that the segregation that we're familiar with uh, in urban areas from the 50s and 60s and 70s of the last century was kind of turning inside out. And it was affluence and wealthy people that were concentrating in the inner parts of the region and the city and lower income people and working class people being pushed out. Um, and our tenant fights in, in a lot of ways, I think in the Bay Area are at the front line of resistance to this new form of segregation. Uh, from an organizing perspective, uh, displacement erodes our ability to organize. Dispersion of people is a dispersion of power. Um, and one of the big insights we've gained, especially since 2016, is that this fight ties the immigration fights and the housing fights. There's lots of overlap in who is impacted, and especially in working class black and brown immigrant communities. One of our allies has started to refer to the two deportations. There's the deportation that we think about in terms of immigration and borders, and then, then there's the deportation when people are evicted from their homes. Um, so just to close, we, so we see the short-term fights for tenant rights like rent control and like eviction protections as really central to our ability to wage longer-term fights for community liberation. Uh, if people aren't here, if people aren't in their communities, but they're pushed either out of the neighborhood, out of the city, out of the state, um, then it really erodes our power to, to wage those frontline struggles to, for longer term uh, liberation. Um, and we see this as really local. These are local fights because these local fights form the building blocks for bigger fights and for bigger alliance and united front building. Uh, and partly they're local because of the law. In this state, we have to win rent control city by city. But it's also because that's how we really approach organizing and building power. Uh, we want to build bases across the state, across the region, across the state, across the country, local strong bases that can fight and win and govern locally, uh, but that can also coordinate and build power together to fight at greater scales 
um, of power and of geography to fight at the state level, to fight nationally, to fight globally. Um, I think I'm out of time. I'll stop there, but really uh, excited to, to be part of this and look forward to any questions that folks might have. Thank you, Tony. Oh, that you're on mute as well. There oh. we go. Let me see. I think I'm muted. No, you're unmuted now. We can hear you. Yep. All right. So, hi, everyone. I'm here to talk a little bit about um, our Soul to Soul Week. Um, and just want to give a shout out to Aratha for coming up with this amazing name. Um, Solidarity to Solutions. You know, what are, how are we building to really come together and uphold and uplift the solutions we've all been working for? Um, and so, September 8th, we're all here on September 8th for the People's Climate March. Um, a lot of shout outs to Seha, APEN, and I Don't Know More for holding it down within the planning committee. And the People's Climate March, um, as people may or may not remember, um, has been um, gathering a lot of folks. I think it was like 400,000 in New York. I don't remember how many in Washington, D.C., but it was a lot and hoping to have a lot more here in San Francisco. And this is a day to be seen, to wear your T-shirts, to have our message loud and clear, have visibility, to honor First Peoples at the front of the march, honor um, the work of all, you know, the people, people of color who've been doing environmental justice work for a long time, show our strength, build power, be creative, uh, be intergenerational, bring our families, we want strollers and bikes and, you know, everybody who, who can come and making it possible and accessible for them. And I think at the end, there's gonna be a resource fair. Um, that's what we've been told or we people have been organizing. So thinking about what are ways in which we wanna participate or be a part of that resource fair um, and what that means for us in, in building our power and, and in building this movement. Um, on Sunday, 9-9, um, we're hoping to do um, more local tours, so really immerse you into the Bay Area. I know that I Don't Know More has been having um, uh, uh, new moon ceremonies um, for a long time, and so giving thanks for those. And I know that there's an Indigenous Women's Healing Walk that's been scheduled, and so um, possibly all of us supporting that. Um, there's been a call for actions at Chevron and Philip 66. Um, tours, art builds, uh, possibilities of visiting one of our farms in San Francisco. And so really looking at like, how is this a day in which we're learning more about and supporting what's happening locally? Um, and so that's gonna be on Sunday. On Monday, um, September 10th, we're going to be hosting an It Takes Roots member assembly, hoping to have um, five to 600 folks um, and really looking at how we're creating a shared platform and vision for the next couple of years um, and building relationship and trust. And um, as Poder, you know, we've been really delving deep into like, what is it that we want? Our, mem our members are super excited to be able to not only share the work they're doing locally, but to meet with all the other amazing members of all the organizations in our, in our um, networks. And so really looking at um, internally, like we're asking all the different groups to look at, you know, what is it that you wanna share and what do you wanna take and what are some of the opportunities to do that within our membership? Um, on Tuesday, September 11th, um, we're having our Soul to Soul Summit. And this is a World Social Forum. Sorry, this is, this is something we wanna do in a public space. We wanna open it to allies. I um, mean, really look at public plenaries, cultural activities and workshops, and really like shine and, you know, uplift all the solutions that have come from our organizations, all the work that we're doing right now, um, in which we're really highlighting that you know, we're able to um, live better in harmony with ourselves, with our communities, with Mother Earth, um, uh, economically, environmentally, in, in our cities, in our rural areas. Um, we have solutions that, um, that are real, you know, and, and that we need to be funding and that we need to be supporting and that we need to be involved in, um, in contrast to the false solutions being proposed at the G8 summit. 
And then from September 12th through the 14th, um, trying to figure out how our, is our message and how are we letting um, the GCAS know um, what they need to know, right? Like what is it that needs to happen uh, to really bring healing to our communities and to Mother Earth um, and really call them out on false solutions. So that's a little breakdown of the week. Um, and just really excited to welcome all of you to the Bay Area and build and learn from each other. And um, excited that um, we had the opportunity to do so um, through so many different ways, through art, through tours, through exchanges, through ceremony. Um, thank you. Thanks, Tere. Appreciate this. Um, just wanted to lift up a couple of other folks that have been on the ground that are not on the call, but are, are, are part of the planning committee. And so definitely Poder, uh, I Don't Know More, and then uh, Right to the City, but also there's Capsa Justa, there's APEN, the Asian Pacific Environmental Network, Communities for a Better Environment, and then California Environmental Justice Alliance, and what we call CJA, the Our Power Communities of Richmond, and the Our Power Communities of San Francisco. Um, so as we transition now from a local kind of state-based approach and um, indigenous um, kind of sovereignty space, we're going to move now to have a discussion. Hopefully Nim will get on and we can hear his perspective on why this is such an important moment um, internationally. And hi, good to see you. Hiya. Uh, um, let's see, Nemo, are we able to get you on? I don't see him here. Nemo's dropped off. I think his internet is unstable and we can't obtain an international call in at this time. Okay, great. Well, why don't we um, kind of go to questions now and we'll see if he can come on. Um, what we really want to kind of express from an international perspective is that the, the folks that are involved in It Takes Roots here in the U.S., both locally and nationally through the alliances have relationships that they've developed at an international with the global, global South partners, indigenous partners that are, are have been um, in Africa um, that were in bond uh, that um, were, uh, were formed during Paris when there were tremendous demonstrations outside of the COP negotiations. Um, it takes roots has always had an inside outside strategy for addressing climate change that's really rooted in climate justice and has been informed by the longstanding solidarity that we've had with global south movements. And so we see this moment as a key moment for intervention, not only on climate because it's an urgent um, dire issue, but really an, uh, an opportunity for us to continue building the movement that extends from local to global. Um, there, there are a couple questions that are coming up. So why don't we go ahead to those questions so that we have time to engage on not only what the main issues are, but um, also how to kind of logistically get involved. So um, we have a couple questions here. The first one here is how can local Bay Area activists and experts on corporate false solutions like cap and trade get involved in support efforts to mobilize communities towards Soul to Soul Week? Um, and maybe I'll have either Tere or um, Penny answer that question. Can, can you repeat the question again? I'm sorry. Yeah, sure. It's uh, um, one of the, the, the participants are asking, how can local Bay Area activists, groups that might not be a member base and experts that have been working on corporate false solutions overall, like cap and trade, get involved in support efforts to mobilize communities towards Soul to Soul Week? Hmm. I think that they should just like get a hold of us via email because we're going to need a lot of people, you know, to to be volunteers that week. Um, and uh, my email, I'll just put it out there. My email is Penny P E N N I E at gatheringtribes.com. Um, so you can email me, and we'll be ha we'll be starting to organize local groups of folks that want to help spread the word, uh, help you know recruit volunteers, and so on. Great, super. Hey, can y'all hear me? 
shall we say, talk over? Yes, we can, Maya. Hi, everybody. Um, I just wanted to let you all know as well that for folks who are ally organizations, um, and sorry, I should introduce myself. Uh, my name is Maya Bharadwaj. I'm the national coordinator with It Takes Roots. Um, and I am talking to you from very sunny Oakland right now. We're scoping out locations for where our folks are going to come into, and we're here for the member assembly and the Soul to Soul Summit. But for folks who are um, ally organizations, there's actually an endorsement form that you can fill out on the website. I just dropped that into the chat, but it's it takes roots.org slash soul to soul slash endorse. Um, and allies can sign up to join a national committee so you can participate in one of the national bodies that are coming together around actions or around arts and culture or around uh, planning the Soul to Soul Summit or maybe you want to help with logistics or communications. And we have point people who are running each of those national committees that are bringing allies into the fold. Um, but definitely looping with the local Bay Area groups who are holding down all the work is um, a really, really important step as well. But please make sure as you're able to let us know on the website so that we have a central place to make sure we're following up with all the allies on this call. Great, Maya. Thank you for responding to that. Um, I'm seeing Nemo on, so we're going to try the third time. Third time is a charm. How you doing, Nemo? You want to try it out on unmuting? Yes. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I apologize. My internet is quite slow tonight. Uh, it's very it's late at night in Nigeria, but this call is so important because conversations held by governments around the world are gearing towards avoiding action, climate action, and then placing the burden on the poor communities in the global south to take climate action on their behalf. So we're having climate action following a very neo-colonial path and completely devoid of justice and equity, which was the core principle of the Kyoto Protocol in the first place, where those most responsible for the climate problem are supposed to take the action, the most action, their fair share of the action to, to slow down climate change and to avoid the calamities that poor vulnerable communities and countries are facing around the world. So uh, the, the importance of the, of the meeting that's coming up in California is not lost on us because it's another way by which the, the rich countries and the powerful politicians will avoid recognition of what peoples of this world agreed already in the year 2010 in Cochabamba when the rights of Mother Earth were drawn up and where the means of raising climate finance were clearly said, spend less money on the military or on needless wars, uh, devote a portion of your national budget towards supporting uh, building of resilience in challenged uh, territories. And of course, reducing wasteful consumption uh, and focusing more on agroecology as a way of cultivating crops in a way that also cools the planet, as our friends in La Via Campesina say. So th these are all the things that really makes the gathering important to us, because we don't want to see it as just another hypocritical gathering, but it should be a gathering where they'll hear the voices of the people to take real climate action, because time is running out. Thank you. Thanks for calling in from Nigeria. What time is it there, by the way? Very late, very late. <laughs> you're on mute if you're talking, Nemo. Um, so we're going we're gonna to go ahead and just uh, move on to some of the other questions. We have about, you know, about five, uh, 10 minutes left. A lot of the questions that are coming in are kind of logistical questions. So I think Maya definitely shared where you'd be able to follow up on these emails. Um, there's, there's a request to follow up via email on the visual of the week's activities. But um, actually, if you go to the It Takes Roots website, ittakesroots.org, there is a visual of uh, the week's activities there. Um, the People Solution Summit, which is actually the, 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 the most um, kind of the common space that we're going to be talking about, 
a lot of these issues in a place that's um, that's public is uh, is held like a World Social Forum event. There is a plenary. There's going to be panels and discussions from communities that are coming together. Um, discussions on reinvestment, around geoengineering, around carbon pricing, but also things like energy efficiency and, and demonstrations about how that's taking place in the Bay. That that um, that agenda hasn't been fully formed, but we're in this process with local communities um, to be able to form that and then share that out for more for more um, input. Um, there's questions here about carpooling options or travel support being provided by it takes routes for folks in Sacramento and other areas in California uh, and beyond. And maybe Maya, this is uh, also just a good opportunity to go through the different national committees so that people know how and where they can sign up. Absolutely. Thanks, Angela. So just so everybody knows, um, I, I'm sorry, I wanted to correct the link that I had shared for allies. It's slash allies. It's very easy, not slash endorse, but so that folks know the structure of the organizing that we are using is a national structure plus a local host committee structure. So on the national level, we have committees who are organizing around actions. We have committees who are organizing around the Soul to Soul Summit Day. We have committees who are organizing around communications, around logistics, uh, around the People's Climate Movement and United Front work. Uh, and all of those committees are participating in calls that are generally like every other week right now and fleshing out all of the plans together. So we welcome members of It Takes Roots member organizations as well as allies to sign up for those national committees and we'll bring you into the work. Um, and so that's really the best way to get involved, whether you're locally based or nationally or even internationally based. And then in terms of getting to the Bay Area on the week of, particularly for folks who've been playing a role in national committees, but really with a wide invitation as well, It Takes Roots is committed to supporting the, the travel and participation and attendance, particularly of frontline communities, black, indigenous, and people of color communities, uh, working class folks, folks who are really um, finding solutions to the effects of climate change, displacement, forced migration, all of these things that uh, are really products, like Candy said, of false solutions. Um, we're going to be supporting you getting to the Bay. So we'll be helping facilitate carpools. Um, we may be having some folks fly in, which we'll be supporting. We've been spending this past week checking out hotels and hostels that'll be comfortable for y'all to stay at. We're going to make sure that you're fed and taken care of. So please RSVP for the week, and that's also on the website. Um, Marion just dropped the link in, but it's uh, it takes roots.org slash soul to soul slash RSVP to let us know if you need assistance getting to the Bay Area and we're prioritizing assistance particularly for folks who are really sharing in the labor and taking on the work with the national committees but this is a you know we want to have hundreds and hundreds of people out there in the streets we're looking at at least a thousand people on the ground to participate in the summit so definitely sign up uh, and we'll be following up with you in that way. We have a couple more contributions. Um, you know, part of part of what we do when we organize is really integrate the culture and the arts piece. And so, uh, Tere wants to share a little bit about the cultural organizing, and then I'm going to hand it off to to Candy, who's going to be talking about uh, protecting Mother Earth, because a lot of the work that we do through it takes roots is like building up the popular education to get people in these spaces understanding what the actual technical concepts around climate change are and, and folks are informed and able to take that back to their communities. So Tere, passing it on. So just wanted to invite folks in the Bay Area, we will be hosting a creative action planning meeting the week of July 9th. We are still confirming the date, so you're welcome to text me or email me at tere at podersf.org, it's T-E-R-E at podersf.org. And I'm sure we will post the, once we get like the time and the date and um, the space uh, when the meeting will be on the website. But we're having a creative action planning meeting. We wanna invite you to as an ally in the Bay Area um, the week of July 9th. We hope you could join us. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Tere, I'll be there in spirit. <laughs> and her numbers are her emails in the chat. If anybody's on online here, you could check it out there. I also posted our link for the Protecting Mother Earth gathering in the chat as well. 
some of you are on the phone. And so that link is www.ienearth.org backslash PME 2018. That's coming up next weekend in Nisqually Territories. So it's our 17th gathering and it's going to be pretty massive. Uh, we are looking at around 1,500 up to 2,500 participating throughout the weekend, maybe more. Uh, we're definitely making enough food to make sure we can accommodate everybody. Uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner is provided um, all four days from the Thursday, the 28th of June to uh, Sunday, the 1st of July. And we have a series of plenaries and panels and workshops and deep engagement sessions covering all of the topics that we talked about on this webinar today. And this conference and this gathering is kind of on the lead up and the road to the Soul to Soul Summit. And we highly encourage folks that are still looking at participating and, and connecting with people before September to participate in these kinds of events that are happening in the lead up to and through September, because we understand that just this one conference is one thing. Yeah, but we still live and work and play in our communities and uh, want to be able to connect and network with each other and continue to build long term relationships because all of this is long term, big term, multi decade term thinking. And we want to see how we can collectively do that together. So, Mata Gerards, again, thank you. Great. So um, we have about five more minutes. Not sure if anybody wants to share some kind of quote. Some. Um, Maya just posted in the chat a piece about the um, grassroots global justice and right to the cities assemblies that are happening also leading up to the Soul to Soul Summit. Uh, those are July 17th to the 22nd in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, so PME, we had an action camp and then the PME and then the rights to the city um, and GGJ assemblies. And so we're being very intentional about the lead up uh, to the summit and also then beyond. Just so folks, we all know what's going on in our organizing minds, but just so you all know, there's been a lot of prep work uh, leading up to it. And then I don't know what you asked for, Angela, an inspirational <laughs> quote. <laughs> Just some closing words from folks if um, we have about five more minutes. So just we're going to go around and just do a, a closing from each person. I see Tere here on the right. Please start with you. A quote? Um. <laughs> Not a Could be anything. <laughs> so welcome for folks to come in and support um, the local struggle. I'm excited to have folks come and, and share and learn and really, um, really excited to be solution-based and solution-focused. Right. Thank you. Penny? Yeah, I'm really excited to meet all the people that are going to be coming into town. Um, uh, thanks, Ter Dere, for highlighting the new moon ceremony. We've been having them every month since September 2015. It's a treaty obligation, and everybody's welcome to come. Um, I, When you asked, said, quote, Angela, I thought about what Sitting Bull said, let us put our minds together and see what we can do for the children or see what can be done. Um, something like that along those lines. So that's always in our hearts with I don't know more, clean air, clean water, clean soil, because that's what we're all working for. So looking forward to seeing you all. Thank you. Tony? Yeah, I, uh, I echo all that. So, you know, you know we have a uh, election in November and there's a bunch of tenant stuff going to the ballot so people are already mobilizing and by the time September rolls around it'll be kind of fever pitch so we're super excited to have people here and contribute to that energy and for us to contribute to this bigger movement uh, so yeah you're all welcome. Nemo? Uh, well as the saying goes a people united can never be defeated we need to stand together, come together in solidarity. That way we can go far and we can overturn the system. It's going to be great. Let's stick together. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just closing up. <laughs> yeah, you, you got the call. Go. It's funny because I was also, <laughs> it wasn't mine. I was also thinking of Sitting Bull. And I say this one a lot. And I tell everybody to put their hands up. 
Put your hands up, everybody. Put your hands up and spread those fingers out. Sitting Bull is pretty famous for saying, as individual fingers, we can easily be broken. But put your fists together. As individual fingers, we can easily be broken. But together, we make a mighty fist. We got to work together. And we're going to win. We're winning. And we just have to keep resilient with each other's support. That's Thank all. you, Candy. Appreciate it. I um, just want to share again, ienearth.org um, uh, forward slash PME 2018, if you want to uh, make it out to the, the Protecting Mother Earth Summit. I know there are some questions about the rights of nature and the rights of earth and how to understand more about that um, concepts. And um, just want to remind folks that the It Takes Roots website is up. It has a lot of information that can answer these. This is one of the many um, calls that we'll have and engagements with with um, different members and allies. There's a funder briefing that's going to be happening on June 26. If you're more interested in supporting, there's different levels of engagement and endorsement um, of both the um, whole week of actions and also the particular uh, Solidarity and Solutions Summit, the Soul to Soul Summit. So thank you for joining the call and we hope you have a really lovely week. Thank you. Angela. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, right, everybody. Bye -bye. See you Thanks, bye, everyone. Not before. Bye. bye. I go to